Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the most major updates to a few of your favorite emulators. The ones I'm going to be focusing on include Simu, Yuzu, RPCS3, and Ryujinx. If you're looking for a specific emulator, you'll find timestamps down in the description and chapters in the video's timeline. So again, feel free to skip around and find any sections that are specifically of interest to you. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like down below, it greatly, greatly helps out my channel. Since there's a lot to cover, let's jump straight into it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two separate CMU updates, the first being a version 120.2, which is released to everyone in the public for free right now, and the second, which is version 121.0, which has just released for CMU supporters over on their Patreon, and as per usual, will be released to everyone for free on the coming Friday. Firstly, let's take a look at the free public version 120.2, concentrating on the changes they've made to OpenGL and Vulkan. First up, they have improved the cache invalidation detection of their new GPU buffer cache. This change fixes corrupted 3D models and flickering textures in Xenoblade Chronicles X. This new GPU buffer cache will also now aggressively drop non-essential data if it is running out of space. This decreases the likelihood of out-of-memory in the GPU buffer errors you may have seen while playing games like Xenoblade Chronicles, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, or Yoshi's Woolly World. The developers have also told us that they implemented further tweaks to reduce GPU-specific graphic bugs and flickering when using the Vulkan API, so in the event that you experienced any graphical issues in games present on older versions, Please test out those games and, if at all possible, report any remaining bugs over on the CMU Discord. The two final changes in this version bring support for relative relock types 251, 252, and 253, these being commonly used by a WUT based homebrew, and finally, they added API support for a memrecord state from heap. OS Compare and Swap Atomic, and OS Compare and Swap Atomic EX. These APIs are all used by Super Mario 64's port and likely other homebrew applications. Moving swiftly along, let's take a look at the changes coming in 121.0. As I previously stated, this will be available to everyone for free on the coming Friday, August the 28th. We've been given some very, very nice quality of life changes in this version. They've given us an upgrade to the title manager it now has the ability to verify and validate your game files. CMU accomplishes this by relying on an online checksum database. This will be managed and maintained both by CMU's developers and also members of the community. 120.1 also brings with it a graphics pack support for extending the amount of emulated RAM that is available to specific games. Currently, the maximum amount of additional RAM that can be allocated is 2GB, this is mainly due to the constraints given by the Wii U architecture. For demonstration purposes, they have created an example of graphics pack for Breath of the Wild. After updating your graphics packs, you will find this under Breath of the Wild, Mods, Extended Memory. This feature seems to have mainly been implemented to help with game modding and the creation of new enhancement graphics packs. Hopefully, these changes will allow much more creative freedom for all of the awesome modders out there in the community. This new version also brings with it some fixes for the CPU JIT, Vulkan, and OpenGL. First of all, they fixed a very rare bug where CMU would apply an incorrect optimization to ADDIC and SUBFE. This change fixes several issues in the Super Mario 64 port. The final two changes of this version relate to OpenGL and Vulkan. First of all, for Vulkan, they correctly now emulate rasterizer disable flags. This fixes an issue in Xenoblade Chronicles X where there will be a brightly colored pixel at the very center of the screen. And the last change of this version relates to OpenGL and Vulkan. They have now added support for a negative viewport height. Some pretty cool changes to CMU in the last three weeks alone, especially welcome are the fixes for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Hopefully we'll see even more in the coming weeks from this Wii U emulator. For now, let's move swiftly along to RPCS3, where unbelievably they have implemented something called RPCN, which is a PlayStation Network matchmaking replacement, which enables netplay and online multiplayer gameplay. We've been told that over the past year, RPCS3 developer Galasiv has been working on this private PSN server replacement, 
which is called, as I said, RPCN. This is a free and open source private server which can act as PSN. This new server code, along with a lot of improvements made to RPCS3 over the past while, enables users to play in multiplayer and co-op modes in games that do not require a custom server on top of requiring PlayStation Network. While this feat is super, super impressive in my opinion, the developers have told us that it should be noted that RPCN is far from being finished, with Bomberman Ultra and Demon's Souls being the only games known to reliably work. While in my limited testing of Demon's Souls I didn't get to do much multiplayer gameplay with other players, what I did test worked absolutely flawlessly with hints, bloodstains and everything else working exactly as it would on PlayStation Network. This feature is going to be an absolutely amazing addition to this already awesome PlayStation emulator, and I personally cannot wait to see it improve even more in future. If you want more information on this RPCN and how to use it, I will link the PR or pull request for it down in this video's description. Any and all information on getting it set up can be found there, and additionally, if you guys would like me to make a guide on how to use it, just let me know down below in the comments and I will do so absolutely and no problem at all. Moving on to Nintendo Switch emulation, we're going to be taking a look at not one, but two Switch emulators. We've seen some really cool improvements to both Yuzu and Ryujinx, but firstly, let's kick things off by taking a look at Yuzu. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at in respect to Yuzu is a pretty significant change that can drastically boost performance on older CPUs, specifically CPUs that do not support the FMA CPU instruction, for example the 2500K, 3570K, 3770K, pretty much any CPU that was released before Intel's Haswell generation that would be the 4770K or before. By coming to your emulation tab, hitting configure, then going to the CPU section, you should see in this accuracy area there is a new unsafe option. By selecting this option and enabling unfuse FMA, this can drastically improve performance on any of the aforementioned CPUs not supporting FMA. For these CPUs, when this unsafe option is enabled, performance has increased by between 50 to 600% depending on your games. For example, in Pokemon Sword and Shield on a 3570K system I tested, the performance differential between on and off was 4 frames per second versus an almost perfectly locked 30. Other titles greatly affected that I have personally tested include Super Mario Odyssey, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and while I haven't had the time to test every single game, you should expect a fairly significant performance increase in most of them, that is, if your CPU does not already support FMA. Any CPUs that do support this CPU instruction are not going to see any difference in performance, so you are by far best off to just leave your CPU mode at accurate. On top of giving us this optimization for lower end CPU users, we've also seen some pretty awesome changes to Vulkan. Hot on the heels of implementing asynchronous compilation and decompilation of shaders for OpenGL, thanks to Yuzu developer Epic Boy, this feature and function is now also fully implemented for the Vulkan API. In case you missed my previous video where I went over what async compilation and decompilation does, the TLDR would be that it drastically reduces the amount of shader compilation stutter you get in gameplay. All Smash Ultimate footage you've been watching was captured on Vulkan using this new feature, and if you've been paying close attention to the frame time counter, you can see that it is damn close to buttery smooth even when playing the game without any previously built shaders as I did for all footage you've watched thus far. In the past few days, we also got some awesome news in relation to both Vulkan and OpenGL on Yuzu. In their last progress report, we were told that there is currently a major rewrite happening to Yuzu's texture cache, with the main function of this rewrite being the fixing of Vulkan's stability, improving its performance, as well as improving the performance and reliability of the current OpenGL implementation. This rewrite is ongoing and we don't have any ETAs as to when it's going to be released, 
So as per usual, make sure you keep your eyes peeled on the channel for any news in relation to that. While we're on the topic of Vulkan, I want to let all AMD users know that if you upgrade to the 20.8.2 driver, it has a new feature called Vulkan Cache, which actually saves some of Vulkan's shaders using your GPU driver. This can greatly help with performance and stability in many games on Yuzu when using Vulkan, so if you do have an AMD GPU, make sure that you upgrade to this 20.8.2 driver in order to utilize this function. Next up, we got an awesome new rewrite of all of the input and HID GUI when coming to emulation, configure, and then coming down to your control section, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Not only has this greatly improved the emulator's HID and input handling, but check out how easy it is to map a controller. Simply turn on your controller, select which pad you want to emulate, then from this input drop-down list, select your controller which you've connected. It's automatically going to map all your controls. For this emulator, you no longer are required to do any form of input mapping, unless, of course, you wish to map or change your controls yourself. Activating, deactivating, or simply just seeing which controllers are active within the GUI is as simple as interacting with the connected controllers section then, as before, for whichever controller you wish to use, all you have to do is select your emulated controller, then from input device, select which input device you wish to be used for this specific pad. Yet another awesome quality of life change given in the last few days is the addition of the emulation configure current game option. When you select this while a game is running, it opens the game's per game settings window, allowing you to edit or change any of the settings that are changeable at runtime. While I'm on this window, I want to make all of you aware of the fact that while I did recommend using the 1080p mod for Super Mario Odyssey in my setup guide, we recently discovered that it causes some instabilities and potential crashing on Yuzu both on Vulkan and OpenGL. For these reasons, I would highly advise disabling this mod in order to avoid these problems. Now that we've taken a look at Yuzu, we're going to be again sticking to Nintendo Switch emulation but swapping over to Ryujinx. In the past few days, Team Ryujinx have released their brand new audio backend rewrite titled Project Amadeus. In the event that you want to check it out and give it a read, the Ryujinx team have given us a very nice little write-up on this new audio rewrite, and if you saw my user video from last month where I covered a lot of the audio-related bugs present in Switch emulation, this update and rewrite in Ryujinx has fixed pretty much all of the same issues. Let's take a quick look at some examples that they have given us inside this article. One major issue that was present in Super Mario Odyssey was the incorrect looping of animations and syncing of them to specific audio sources in gameplay. Thanks to this new implementation and complete rewrite of their audio backend, all of these audio-related animation looping issues have now been completely fixed in Super Mario Odyssey and literally dozens upon dozens of other games. It's not just audio animation issues that have been fixed, in literally hundreds of games, there have been drastic improvements to both audio and audio mixing quality. Let's take a quick example of before and after in Super Mario Odyssey. That is a pretty damn impressive improvement to audio quality by anyone's account. Yet another title greatly improved by this audio rewrite is another very popular one, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Some pretty damn impressive improvements we all have to admit. All of these audio rendering changes can be found in the latest Ryujinx master builds, a link to which you will find down in this video's description. As always, if there are any games that you would like me to test out, be it on Simu, Yuzu, RPCS3 or Ryujinx, just let me know down below in the comments section and if I have that game, as always, I will test it out for you absolutely no problem. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. 
If you enjoyed it, please remember to leave it a thumbs up down below. And if you enjoy these types of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel or supporting me over on my Patreon if you really, really want to help me in making these types of videos. Once again, guys, thank you all very much for your viewership. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one.